I got to hang with Lexi Jessie, formerly known as Lexi Parasek, and she showed me how to show groom and wear a matching coat of a mini American Shepherd. Now, you know the drill. We start with all of the products you need to get the job done, but we will also be sneaking in some really cool tips, so be sure to watch to the end. And here we go. You asked and I listened. I have been filming a stockpile of more grooming episodes and they are jam-packed with so many cool tips and techniques that can be used on a plethora of breeds. So comment below with what breed you would like to see, like and share this video with your friends, and of course subscribe if you haven't done so yet so you can ring that little bell. We don't want you missing one episode. Getting your mini clean is the first step in the grooming process. As with all breeds, there is a collection of shampoos to get the job done. You want a shampoo that's for coarser coat that's not gonna make it too soft so I use spectrum one shampoo and you dilute this down and I use this for the body and their rough and if you have dogs that like most of ours they're on the farm their whites can tend to get yellow wherever you're at it can stain orange from your ground if you have clay stuff like that so I use the shimmering lights you can get this at Walmart Walgreens anywhere it's super cheap it's actually what I use for my hair it's a toning shampoo so this helps if you have a dog that's really has bad, bad yellowing, orange, anything like that. But make sure that you condition their whites first before you use this because this is going to strip everything out of their, their coats first. And then this is also if you have just basic, any whitening shampoo works. I really like this one. It's Hydra. It smells really good. You dilute this one down as well. Um, this is what I use every weekend for dogs that are always with me. Um, and this is for ones that are going to need a little bit They're more. Whitening. Okay, so when you dilute, do you know the percentages? I have a little bottle that we actually use. There's one there. Um, and it is weighed out. It's this brand. So it tells you how much that you dilute for this brand. Okay, all right. And this, I pretty much, I don't really read the dilution on it. I just... Okay. Diluted until it's sudsy for me. I okay. like it a little more shampoo to water ratio. Okay. Um, but it's all preference really. Okay. And this is a great brand. They make all sorts of detangling. They make detangling spray stuff for smooth coats, rough coats, long coats, anything you could think that you want. They do they as make well. It okay. Everybody knows Chris Christian's always makes yeah, good yeah. stuff. Right. This is a newer. This is a newer brand. one. Okay. Yep. So my next question is: You had mentioned conditioning the coat. Prior to mm -hmm. using this, what would you recommend conditioning the coat with? I really like the Espana Silk brands. Okay. Um, they have a lot of good, they have antiseptic shampoo for dogs that have, you know, they can get hot spots or other issues with their skin. They have a great line for a hydration as well, a protein conditioner and shampoo. Um, I use it on the Dobermans okay. and any, any of the Chihuahua stuff like that that need a, a Softer coat. Softer coat, okay. Um, I think that it's too soft for the Shelties and the Minis, okay. in my personal opinion. Okay. All right, and this is the protein conditioner by Espana. They make multiple other... Is this... Oh, this is a, this is for horses, but is it a... It's for horses and dogs, and they I mean, also a, make yeah. people as well. Oh, okay. I've used it um, on my hair. You can order this directly online through their company if you just type in Espana and you also can order it on eBay, Amazon, anything like that. Okay. But right. this is great for dogs that need deep conditioning, stuff like that. I mean, even my hair, when you're going to tone it or you're going to use a rough shampoo, you always want to condition it right first before you're going to okay. do any color treatment, anything like that. Okay. So, okay. So that before that, okay. Awesome. When I'm grooming, and you guys will see later in the video what exactly we'll do, this is a great one. This is like a cholesterol, and if you guys watched one of the first videos that we made together, <laughs> we called it mayonnaise, or Jen called it mayonnaise. This is great, but you have to be very careful. This is super sticky. So this is something that I would use for if you had a dog that needed more texture in its coat down its back if it had a soft top line. I use this in the rough of the Shelties, Collie, stuff like that. This is a great great uh, cholesterol. I also use just a typical cholesterol as well. This is a cholesterol that you can just get from Sally's. And all this is, is it's kind of like a mayonnaise consistency. <laughs> and it's, mayonnaise. it's a cream. So you put that in before you chalk them so it gives something for the chalk to stick in. Some people use shaving cream, like the Barbazol shaving cream and stuff. Mm -hmm. I prefer this because I think that it's a little softer. Yeah. It sticks a little bit better. Um, but if you need something stickier, 
this is what I would that use. Would be and this is a super. Oh, stick. wow. That's quite a difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's like a huge difference. When you're done using it, it's. Yeah. Like a paste on your Yeah, hands. it's definitely very pasty. Um, the other thing, once I do that, then I go ahead and I chalk. And I always mix my chalk. And this is something my family has done for years. We use a mixture between the Crown Royal. Um, it's the full body chalk. And then we do the... Um, I use now Arturo, that brand. Right. They have, like, it's for terriers. It's like a stripping powder almost. I mix a little bit in there because it's super coarse. And then we mix about a half of that with baby powder. Okay. So it's a little bit of everything, but you still have the whitening and you still have the harshness. Yeah. But it's still yeah. kind of brushed right out and it's not going to be clumpy. Right. Got it. So that's how we chalk. And then obviously with the minis, you typically, a lot of it is grooming um, with their top lines. We have some that have super soft top lines and super soft coat. What I personally like to do is I go in and I take a lot of the uh, undercoat out to get it to lay correctly. You go in and you cut the curls, stuff like that, which we'll talk about later in the video. Um, some of the other, I'm a big hairspray person is... A lot of people probably know that comes from the Shelties. Um, and I use pretty much, I love the Chris Christensen one. This is the Kenra um, volume. This is just a generic that you get from Sally's. It's great too. I like a hairspray that is sticky. I don't like a super light. I like one that's going to actually do the you want, yeah, yeah, you want to know it's there. Exactly. So like for some of the color changes and stuff like that, like, as many people know, some of these minis have dilute spots and stuff like that. And in our standard, we're supposed to have a clear color. You don't ever want to be breeding these dogs with running cop or big dilute spots, stuff like that. Some people show them like that. I don't always think that that's us as breeders. We know that it's there. But if I'm going to show a dog, I'm going to make it as perfect as possible. So I will take the fancy full, and this is brown, and this comes out as a very dark brown, and put it on the spots that I think, if the dog has dilute spots, I will use this. They also make a liquid as well, um, and the liquid does the same thing. This is black. So it all just kind of depends. This is an old, old Sheltie grooming trick that has been around longer than I have been around. <laughs> And you'll see later how we'll do it, but you know, you blow them out. I use like to use some Botifier or some Crown Royal to get, you know, some texture, some body in there. Um, and I mix this and I usually spray them down with this right before I'm going to show. It makes everything fluff up because you never want their, their coat to get super dry. That's what causes it back to curl and issues like that. So you want to just always keep it as moist as possible. Like in Shelties, I was always taught that we don't, you don't brush the dog unless there is water, self rinse, some sort of substance that's wet because now you're gonna break off that coat. I use a lot of people um, products. I don't use a lot of dog products. Chris Christensen has great lines, but this stuff, um, Power Lift, Beyond the Zone, this is a teasing spray that I would put in like some of the top lines on some of them. This is a thickening mousse that I would do before I ever were to blow dry the dog. And then you have the standard list of hardware that you see in all of my videos, but she will share how to use it in episode two. First, you have your trusty double-ended comb, which you use before you do any trimming, making sure that all of the snarls and the mats are out. As we've learned in past episodes, the Mars stripping tool is what you use to get out that undercoat, and then the stripping knife is used to smooth out heads and top lines. Lexi has a really large collection of shears, but they all have a different purpose. The hedge trimmers has really super close teeth, so you can take out quite a bit of hair and they are perfect for feet and head trimming. Thinning shears in all variations are great to have on hand. Of course, what you use depends on the dog's actual coat. Then she has straight shears to trim around the feet and curved to help trim around the ears. Baby. I want to see your baby. <gasps> this is my baby. Aww, do we have a name for it? Brooke, my best friend who she's helps me a lot. She has a name for it. She has a name for all of my good brushes. I couldn't tell you what they are, but it's her job to keep track of all these because I will freak out when I, when I Oh my lose God, it. this is definitely. It is an old collie slicker that, I, like I said, it's probably 40 years old. It's like your binky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Aww. And I don't care what anybody says. 
It will never go anywhere. And when it breaks, I will fix it. Last but not least, you have your standard set of brushes. Of course, she says a must is a good pin, slicker, and finish brush. They separate all the hairs so that your cuts and trims look more even. But then, of course, I think everybody has their all-time favorite brush. It is, honestly. I don't. My mom, she always tries to go out. <gasps> no. Yep. No, that's not right. Nope. Okay, peeps. Next week, you get to see her use this table of awesomeness in action as she grooms a mini American Shepherd. So, until then. Oh.